name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Today we are celebrating the memorial of St. Casimir. He's a patron of people with tuberculosis, and he's also the patron of Poland and Hungary. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries as we call to mind the love and mercy of God and ask for the Lord's forgiveness for our many sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and you are Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and you are Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to serve you is to reign. Grant that with the help of St. Casimir's intercession, we may constantly serve you in holiness and justice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him, the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Iranians had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said, Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman sent out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and explained, I am a God with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy. Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invo invoke the Lord his God, and would move his hand over the spot and this cure, thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and Ephapa better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the jaw the seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God, on his arrival, he stood there before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold? As the hen longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. Thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plentiness redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarepha in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong but he passed through the midst of them and went away the gospel of the lord Thinking about what it is we're celebrating today, the optional memorial of St. Casimir, I cannot help but reflect with you on the responsorial psalm. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? My dear friends, it seems to me that no matter what we get, no matter where we go, no matter how many things we acquire, no matter what kinds of titles we get, there seems to be and there is always something in the human person that keeps longing and longing and it can only be satisfied by God. Casimir, was a younger brother and his brother had been made a king of Bohemia in 1471. And history tells us that at the age of 13, Casimir participated in the military campaign to make him a king over Hungary. Now, as to whether or not he was forced to join the military or he uh, was the initiator of it, fact is that he had all that it took to become a king of Hungary. 
But history tells us as we go along and read about him that he became such a different person. I think he was responding to the thirst that his soul was longing to have, the eagerness that his inner core was longing for, that Casimir embraced the life of chastity. He became celibate on his own. He led an austere life. He became a friend to the sick, a friend to the poor, a friend to the needy. He had a great devotion to our Blessed Lady. When I was growing up and I heard things like this, I thought that person must be a bishop, an archbishop or a priest. But now I am learning that you and you and you and you, some of you, are, hmm, I'm being recorded, I would have said, are holier than we are. And that is what we are called upon, irrespective of our status, whether as lay people or as priests or as deacons, every one of us is called upon by our baptism to be holy. And I told you about my archbishop who many years ago said, my prayer has always been that my people do not go to heaven and leave me on the way. St. Casimir is an example of what it is that Lent is about. We need, my friends, to abandon things that we know are not important and go closer and closer to the Lord by the way we live our lives of prayer, by the way we live, we live our lives of almsgiving, by the way we live our lives of penance. Lent is a time when we allow our temples to be washed, to be cleansed of things that are unimportant, as we heard in the Gospel reading yesterday. And so, if you are looking for holiness, don't look up to me. Let us look up to one another, because we learn from each other and we draw strength from one another. Let us all help one another and pray together and journey together, abandoning things that are not necessary, things that are distracting us from serving our God in sincerity of heart, like Casimir who could have become a king. Indeed, he was a prince. But a prince who led an austere life, a prince who became holier than a monk, a prince who became holier than some priests and bishops. That's what every one of us is called upon to be. God loves us and God wants us all to be his companions. Let us pray. For the church, may she be um, emboldened, emboldened by God in spreading the message of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For public authorities, may God lead them in prudent and loving decision making. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For this faith community, may Christ inspire us to generously share the gifts we have been giving. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, that they will rest in the peace of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord For Joe, Despair, Gers, and for John, Papazin, for whom this Mass is being offered. For our beloved, we pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in our hearts, for peace in our neighborhood, 
for peace in Russia and Ukraine, for peace in Haiti, for peace in the Gaza, Palestine, and Israel, we pray to the Lord. Lord Faithful God, your children gather around you, and we trust that you will grant us all we ask, for we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and humanness have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God, forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drain. Blessed Blessed God, God, we ask you to be pleased with the sacrifice which we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Lord, what shall we mind? Let us pray, my brothers and my sisters, that our offering, yours and mine, may truly be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord Jesus Christ, 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 Amen. Let us pray. In our prayer today, let us not forget to pray for Mary Tine, as well as all who have asked for our prayers. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of your hearts, that freed from disordered affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of our holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face of mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Casimir, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await your blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Do not look on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us, as believers of Christ, share the peace of Christ with one another. My friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. This is he who called Casimir to leave his, his powerful dignity and, and authority and get rid of everything that he might follow Christ safely and fully. It is he who asked us to get rid of all the things that are impediments to our salvation. How blessed are we who have responded to this call and I've come to share at the sacred supper. Lord, I am not ready The body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, O Lord, we pray, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired by this confidence. Fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come before thee, we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother of the Word incarnate, despite not our petitions, let in your mercy hear and answer them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.